Nearly one year ago, I have applied liquid metal on a GPU and desktop CPU in my laptop. I have even custom nickel plated the copper heatsink to slow down the process of liquid metal getting soaked into the heatsink compared to bare copper. This should mean I don't have to reapply the liquid metal for at least one year, most likely even longer. Shouldn't it? Well, let's see how it turned out after all. Before we start, some words about my usage of this modern laptop over the last 11 months. Actually, it's 11 months and 11 days, <laughs> because I've applied the liquid metal at September the 9th, 2021. I started to use it as my daily working laptop from October 2021 till August 2022. I've transported and used it at home and work at a daily basis. So there were plenty of heat cycles and use time. Before I removed the heatsink, I re-ran some benchmarks just like after liquid metal was applied freshly. And I already could see some degradation in terms of temperature and performance. Unfortunately though, I got no air conditioning and the ambient temperature when re-running these tests were over 2 degrees centigrade higher than when the other benchmark ones were made. So it's hard to tell how much of a difference there would be under perfect test conditions. But nevertheless, you can see that there is a bigger temperature difference between those two than just 2 or 3 centigrade. After removing the heatsink, there is good and bad news. The good news is that there is no liquid metal spilled away from the CPU or GPU. The bad news is that I could clearly see why the temperature and performance was worse. The fins are dusty and are full of my cat's hairs. But what's worse, it looks like the liquid metal dried out. Well, actually it didn't dry out, but most likely partially migrated into the heatsink. This is called iron migration and it's happening because the gallium in a liquid metal alloy got a negative potential while the IHS and heatsink's copper got a positive one. So in short, the gallium is migrating into the heatsink over time, which leads to altered material attributes. Most importantly, it raises the alloy's melting temperature to a point it becomes solid at room temperature. Um, but wait, didn't I nickel blade the heatsink to prevent exactly that? Well, yes, but as it looks, the nickel blading could have been not good enough. At least I can say it's a fact that nickel blading does not prevent iron migration completely, but does slow it down dramatically compared to bare copper. The thicker and gapless the nickel layer is, the better it should slow down the migration until a point where it takes several years for the liquid metal to get partially soaked into the heatsink. Not just a year like in my case. So obviously something went wrong. Maybe I will find out more about the source of the problem in the future, but for this video the observation of an insufficient protection against liquid metal migration is all I can say at the moment. Ok, and what about the tests? Well, to check if the rough surface got any negative effect on the performance and temperature, I have simply reapplied fresh liquid metal. This way, I was able to get the performance back to the original level from nearly one year ago. The temperature is a little higher though, but that is easily explainable with a little higher ambient temperature during the newer benchmark ones. What's a bit odd though, is that the average clock speed was lower even if the performance is on the same level. So in this plot I have cut off the first 3 minutes to reduce the effect of different heatsink temperatures at the beginning of the benchmark. You can see that the clock speed is lower, but the performance is still at the same level. Even reinstalling the same GPU driver as back then didn't change anything about that. It could have also been TimeSpy, which was updated in the last year, which leads to a slightly different performance behavior. The difference is very small though, so it may be within a margin of error. I've also done another test run 6 days later, when the ambient temperatures were a little lower. The results speak for themselves. We came very close to our original first liquid metal application again even with the pretty bad looking and rough to the touch residues on the heatsink and IHS.
Unfortunately, the liquid metal residues will be the topic for another video. I will show you a new method to remove them. Well, not sure if it's new, but at least I have never seen anybody doing it before. However, this would be a little too much for the simple temperature and performance comparison video. So all I got to say is thanks for watching and see you in part 2. Bye!